Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors. And this week's contract tip has to do with a buyer purchasing a property when there is a tenant living in the property. So if your buyer is an investor, typically uh, they already know there's a tenant in there or they're actually looking for a tenant in the property. But the issue is if you have a buyer who is purchasing a property as an owner occupant to actually live in that property and there is a current tenant in the property, couple things you definitely need to uh, take care of and manage as you are negotiating and writing your offers. So number one, the contract clearly states that a buyer does purchase a property subject to uh, any and all encumbrances and leases uh, that go with the property. Um, and that is stated in the title warranty section of the purchase and sale agreement. So as you're showing a property, if there's someone living there and you have knowledge that it is not the owner, and typically that will be in the showing instructions of the MLS, then obviously, or maybe not so obviously, but there is a lease somewhere involved with that person living there. If your buyer is, if their intention is to actually live in the property, uh, him or herself, then you need to find out all the information about the lease. Number one, you need to specify the lease in the contract. Number two, you need to get a copy of the lease. Number three, you need to uh, address the transfer of security deposit and so forth and so on. Because the issue is, what happens if that tenant doesn't vacate? At the time you go under contract, let's say the seller says, well, the tenant will be out, the lease is up, the tenant will be out the end of this month, so forth and so on. Well, what happens if the tenant does not vacate and it is time for your closing? Um, do you have a copy of the lease? Are you all of a sudden going to have the responsibilities of evicting the tenant? If that is even allowed for in the lease, you need to have a copy of the lease to make sure you know what the uh, landlord's and tenant's responsibilities are with respect to the lease. There may be provisions in there for the tenant to stay in the property. You're not sure what the notices have been agreed upon or extensions of the lease, so forth and so on. So don't be caught unawares if you are a few days from closing, a week from closing, and there is a tenant in the property that has not vacated. Also, what if the tenant vacates and there is damage done? Um, anyway, there's all sorts of issues. So if you're working with a buyer whose intent is to live in that house and there is a tenant in that house, you have more work to do. You definitely need to uh, reference the lease, look at the lease, evaluate the lease, address the security deposit, address any damage, address any um, potential eviction proceedings or address that prior to closing, make some of these issues contingent upon uh, the tenant having moved out prior to closing, so forth and so on. So. Uh, definitely take a look at that. Don't just ignore the fact and don't just, if the seller says, well, the tenant will be out by the end of the month prior to closing, there's all sorts of issues with tenants vacating leases. So um, also remember that at closing, an owner-occupant buyer signs an affidavit stating that their intent is to occupy the property. So if they purchase the property, tenant doesn't vacate, we don't know what a particular magistrate's court would judge uh, regarding eviction. It could take a couple weeks. It could take a year. Who knows? Anyway, just some issues to definitely be aware of when you are working with an owner-occupant buyer purchasing a property where there is a tenant already in place. Thank you so much for watching. Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors, satisfying your needs with service, innovation, and education.